one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. This is Nate from Cincinnati. I chose LA Confidential for a couple of reasons, mainly uh, the strong cast, uh, detailed storytelling. And I, I also feel like there's a very strong uh, relevance of the police force being corrupt in today's society uh, matched with what was happening 70 years ago in the 50s. Uh, I feel like it's a really strong portrayal of how a police force can take advantage of the power that they have. Um, it's a really strong story, um, and I really think that it's a movie that uh, should be embraced and watched with uh, incredible detail to how they tell this story. On a side note, it was maybe the only movie I ever watched on Laserdisc back in the late 90s when that was something that was prevalent. Um, but I hope everyone enjoys the movie. Um, I'm excited to hear what uh, Cinema Cult has to talk about this movie, and uh, I look forward to it. Back to Cinema Cult Network. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And this week we're doing another listener request. As you already heard, this is from Nate from Ohio. He wanted to hear us talk about the 1998 film LA Confidential, which I had never seen. And I know both uh, Matt and Honto had seen it. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I saw it a few years ago. 97's uh, LA Confidential. Oh, I had 98 on mine. Yeah, it's 97. Oh, you know what? It was at a 98 Oscars. 97 yeah, was the yeah, film. So That's correct. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you both had seen it. I'd never seen it before. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in real quick. And let's talk about what this has on Rotten Tomatoes. Honto, I'll start off with you. What do you got? 92. Okay. Matt? Uh, 87. Okay. It has a 99 on Rotten Tomatoes. 99. Wow. Wow. Really? Yeah. Let's talk about the U.S. budget. Matt, go. I think I might know this. It's just say a number, dude. If you know it, don't... 30, 33. 25. It's 35. Matt knew it, so he was just trying to... Of course, of course If, if you know it, don't say anything. No, I think um, I, I read so much trivia on this movie. Uh, unfortunately, there's a ton of trivia, but none of it's, like, really good trivia. Is it, like, all, like Hollywood history trivia, or...? Uh, yeah, there was one in there that was really interesting, but like a lot of it's just kind of like uh, they did this uh, and behind the scenes, and it wasn't like it's nothing like nothing like talk worthy. It's just kind of like oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Like at one point when Kevin Spacey's character dies, uh, he couldn't help focusing on the director, so they had to draw a circle on one of the cabinets so he could look at that. And I was like, okay, it's not worthy trivia to talk yeah, to these that's guys kinda... about. That's kind of a sad. lot of that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of trivia, but not nothing really fruitful. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so we don't have international numbers for this. So how much did it make it domestically Honto? Uh, 90. Okay. Matt. Um, 85. I think I undershot. 64. Oh, never mind. I overshot. So, um, and then if you want to play a bonus game, did anybody look up the Oscars for this? Uh, no, I did not. I know, I remember Kevin Basinger being nominated for it. I don't, other than that, I don't know. Is this a Shakespeare in Love uh, win this year? Well, let's play the game real quick. Uh, 98, um, is that the same year as Saving Private Ryan? Yeah. That's Titanic. Then, yeah, yeah. No, no, 99, Oscar 99 would have been Saving Private Ryan. Titanic would have won Oscars 98. Okay. 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 Right? Because if this movie came out in 97, Titanic came out in 97. I mean, please prove me wrong. I'm just guessing. Yeah. No, it's fine. No big deal. Um, okay, it's so it was a podcast for... that <laughs> they're out false I information. I can't know everything. How many Oscars was this movie up for, Matt? Uh, ten. No. Ha Wait, seven. Honto? Five. Nine. Nine. So, oh, okay. And then how many did it win? Three. Yeah, I was going to say three, but since I just said just, three, I'm going to say four. Just two, which isn't like just two, but uh, Best Supporting Actress for Kim Basinger and Best Screenplay, Curtis Hansen and Brian, the name is cut off. 
So Brian, the name is cut off. Brian, his name and... is cut off. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. So Brian, that's all I got for that. Brian Helgeland. 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 So yeah, won two Oscars in 1998. I wonder, Hanto... I wonder real Go quick. Ahead. I wonder what. I mean, you don't have to say this, but I'm just thinking out loud. But I wonder what like one for set design and, um, you know, like audio mixing and all that stuff for like for that year. Because I feel like the set alone uh, and costume design on this movie is pretty pretty good um i will give it to you for audio design um we have this cranked up and the audio sounded phenomenal in this movie yeah, yeah. Um, and the music too i wonder if who won from because i don't know if jerry goldsmith was uh nominated for um he i had the full list yeah, I don't know. He, yeah, he was awesome nominated um but yeah it was up for editing sound mixing so there you go uh production design cinematography director score picture and then it won for screenplay and supporting actress and, which i like ken basinger in it but i'm surprised she was nominated yeah she's one yeah, of those I, like uh only in three scenes you know five minutes of screen time but one you know won the yeah, whole yeah. she was in it for a total of 15 minutes is what right? i read okay. yeah that doesn't uh, but then, wasn't me. she okay another one of uh curse hansen movies eight mile mm-hmm. did she win for eight mile or was she just up for eight mile oh, i didn't even know she was up for eight mile I thought she was. I, was, I thought she was up for it. I don't think she was. I, I think the only thing that was up for was Eminem. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, he was. Wow, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he won the Oscar that year. No, he didn't. Yes, look. Oh no, for best song, not actor. <laughs> I was like, he's not. Is that what you're actor? thinking? I was like, why yeah. you guys not? That's what I was me? thinking too. I was like, best actor. Wow. I was wondering why you guys didn't believe me. Okay, that makes sense now. Hanto, well, you're so uh, deadpan with your delivery, so it's like I can't tell if you're joking most of the time. That's valid. Uh, Hanto, yeah. can you take us to the cast and the crew of LA Confidential? Directed by Curtis Hansen, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, The River Wild, and Eight Mile. Starring Guy Pierce as Ed Exley. Uh, around this time, he kind of like, I think was getting his start around this time, but uh, around this era, I think 99 was or was the year he was in a movie called Ravenous, which is very underrated it's a very underrated. Uh, i actually have it but i've never watched it i like it's okay movie. i like the movie a lot i heard it, it's it gets to a point where that movie should end and it doesn't i remember being that movie like i don't want to say it was overrated but like people do talk up that movie a lot really really awesome plot it's just yeah. and it's got like, um what's his face a 90, um, i think it's like a 90 minute mark is where that movie should end and that's like is it like two hours i can't remember but I can't remember um, either. Pretty good cast. It's awesome. I love the environments. It's like a snowy uh, setting, and it's yeah. uh, pretty. Uh, it's got a pretty good creep factor to it. Yes. Uh, Russell Crowe as Bud White. Um, you know the nice guys, Gladiator. I just recently watched him in a movie called Unhinged, where he basically plays a uh, a guy with road rage. And, How was it? Man, that movie's. I mean, it's not really that great, but the concept is bonkers and was it entertaining at least yeah yeah russell crowe is crazy in that movie okay cool like uh the stuff he does is crazy okay cool i did i did read that uh i think he was on an interview with howard stern and he said recently and he said if he can make a sequel to any of his movies he said la confidential and nice guys were the two movies he'd make sequels. i was like going for nice guys for sure that yeah, I'm kind of surprised Nice Guys never got a sequel. Especially with the way it ended and everything. I would yeah. love to see another another movie. And I want to say it did well, too. Yeah, I think it did. It did really yeah. well. It, it got uh, well-received and everything. I think it, did you I guys think just... read about the sequel to oh, LA Confidential? No. Did you guys read no, about this? No. Oh, really? Is okay, it like so, Dolly or something? Or? No, you, as of like not even a year ago, they were getting ready to film the second LA Confidential. And uh, Guy and um, Russell, Russell Crowe are going to come back. Uh, but Chadwick Bosman, is that how you say it? Bosman? Bosman? Bosman. He was going to be like the main character, like the rookie type guy. Oh. And then they had it all good to go. And then when he passed, um, I can't remember who put it out, but they were like, we're not going to move forward anymore. This is going to be for him. And now we're not going to do it. So. Oh, man. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. 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 It feels like, I'm not going to lie to you, that kind of sounds like uh, – the studio backing out just to back out and they're like eh like we're good like well yeah, it's like it. i, I know, can't imagine like there him. being a i can't imagine there being a big crowd to be like oh i can't wait for that sequel 
the yeah. franchise yeah. they're going to make for the LA Confidential franchise. Yeah, it's just weird that like with Chadwick Boseman dying, they would just be like, no, we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. Maybe like, that was his project. Strange. Maybe that was his thing. Yeah, that he oh, that's to do. true. Yeah. It could have been his project. Um, I know there was talks, and they did do this. They did try to see. I think it was CBS tried to do a TV show, and they filmed the pilot yeah. with Kiefer Sutherland. I watched a little bit of it on YouTube today. Mm. Damn it's pretty it. cool. It was pretty corny. He, I think he's supposed to play uh, Kevin Spacey's part. Vincennes, Kevin Spacey's really? Jack. Yeah, Jack, right? Jack Vincennes, yeah. Yeah. But then Kevin they, Spacey. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. It wasn't the same. <laughs> but uh, then they later changed it to Jack Bauer, and they, they called it 24. That's what yeah. happened to it. <laughs> but it, it came out in 2001, and then uh, uh, it, didn't, it didn't obviously take off. But yeah. like just recently in the past couple of years, they talked about – like CBS reigniting an LA confidential show. I could see hmm. it as like an so. HBO, like an HBO series or something like yes. that. Yes. Like, yes. Uh, like a true detective esque. Perry know. Mason. Yeah. Perry Mason, which I need Perry to watch Mason. that. I need to watch that show on HBO. Yeah. I was going to say, if you like LA confidential, you'll probably like Perry Mason. Cool. Yeah. Did you guys see the audition tapes that Keeper Sutherland did for LA confidential? No. no. Um, I haven't written down. I'll just reenact what it was. Oh, okay. Um, That's, that, that should be good. So someone's like interrogating, um, um, uh, not, not Jack Bauer, but Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. And uh, this is already off to a great start. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you're, really yeah, paint, like, you're painting a picture. Well, the, it was like the intro to like the series. It'd be like, like, where are you from? He's like, L.A. And they're like, what do you do for a living? He's like, it's confidential. <laughs> and then that was like the opening. Oh. For every episode would be him saying that okay. um it didn't yeah, go I, forward yeah, yeah i wonder why it didn't was, do so well and then it's weird and then, and then yeah. he's like dealing with the the rookie police force he's like there's a lot of young guns on the force <laughs> yeah there's a lot of guns too <laughs> young guns <Yeah>. too. <laughs> we gotta find all these lost boys <laughs> <laughs> then like you'd find like a body and you're like what's the status looks like it's a flatliner <laughs> <laughs> where are you driving right now i'm on the freeway <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that what it was called the police on the phone booth <laughs> <laughs> dude phone booth is a good movie uh, I, remember, watch... I remember being all right i like i remember i remember i saw like uh um a thing online is said what movie's better ravenous or phone booth and people are like phone booth yeah they really oh, like, like to look booth. up that ron tomato score on that one that what, yeah. on, what what poll it was, was a that? poll it was a poll let's just move that's forward. not real let's move forward <laughs> what's better pencils or milkshakes go ahead like what kind of like comparison what's better pay master or milk money <laughs> 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 okay so we got kevin spacey as jack vincennes oh sorry uh Kev, uh uh Kiefer sullen as jack vincennes Mm. Um, wow. seven. I'm pretty sure it's Jack Vincent. I didn't watch. I just it's Jack, Vin- it. it's Jack Vincent. Is the is the cop's name? No, if Kiefer Sutherland was supposed to be playing him on this show, oh, it was, just, oh, it was okay. a bad show. It was a bad one. Like I, I kind of watched check- a little bit of it, and I was like, ooh, okay. I need to check that out. This is kind of rough. So yeah, around this time he was a uh, uh, Usual Suspects. I think he had won the Best Supporting Actor award for that movie, and then he was also in Seven. Uh, then we got Kim Basinger as Lynn Brackett. Can I cut you off real yeah. quick? Another sequel. Did you know there was a sequel to Seven? I just read about that with Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. What? Yeah, I just read about that. It's like a yeah. unofficial sequel. And fill it in. Fill it in. What do you, what we got here? Where'd you guys? Read I, it was this? gonna be. It was gonna be called Eight. Yeah. And then uh, it, it has a different name now. I think um, it's on Hulu. I think. Wait, this but, movie's already been made. Yeah, yeah years like ago. 2015, I think, is when it came out. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Can you guys name, do yeah. research on this right now? Like, I feel well, like sorry. I, super it, was a, vague. it was a dumb article, and I didn't think I was going to be talking about an LA Confidential episode. All right, you guys keep going. I, I do want to talk about this though. Before we leave, man, only if the internet, only well, if the internet was available to you as well. We just well, you keep dropping these. You, keep, you drop the well, bomb. Before you look like, up, you drop the bomb. Before you look up that, look up the Rotten Tomatoes score for Phone Booth and uh, Ravenous real quick. That says, uh, uh, we got- <laughs> it's got a score of awesome. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's what I got, too. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so really quick, keep... <sighs> before we move on from casting, though. Okay. Kevin Spacey sucks. Let's yeah. just say that. But yeah. excellent actor. Yeah, yeah. It's always, yeah, it's like, always, it's especially good whenever he dies horribly on screen. That's always, like, a primo. It's, but he's, like, dude, everything I've seen him in, I've, like, 
really enjoyed him in. I think yeah. when all that shit happened with him, I was I was like really bummed. I was like, oh, that sucks. Like I thought he was a really good actor. He he did like great impressions. He seemed like he had like a um he navigated and picked like really great projects. And yeah. then it's like I don't ever want to see the guy ever again. Dude, you how know? will I watch how will I watch Austin Powers Goldmember member ever again? Is he in that? Um, Is he playing Dr. Yeah, Evil? He's, he's Dr. Evil in the beginning. Ah, him, and Danny, yeah. him and Danny DeVito. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I'm mini me. Oh. <laughs> Phone booth has I'm a mini 70, me. Phone booth has a 72%. Ravenous has a 49%. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. It's really sad because I looked up this other <laughs> I, I looked up this other movie that said like 88% on Rotten Tomatoes in some French movie called Ravenous. It's like oh a- yeah, score. <laughs> if I remember correctly, Ravenous was a sci-fi channel original. No. You're thinking of dog soldiers. I, we no, just no, no, watched no. it on I sci-fi. Like 30, we just watched it on I'm sci-fi. I'm like no. 33% sure that it was a sci-fi original. No, I, I we they, okay. We talked about this before in the podcast. Back in the glory days of the Sci Fi Channel, when Thursday nights was like Tales from the Crypt night, and then yeah, they had like yeah. movie premieres every weekend. I think I remember Ravenous being like a movie premiere, and like they showed it a lot. That's where I watched. I watched huh. Ravenous on Interesting. Sci-Fi so Channel. I was right. Maybe uh, to be Hunter. determined. Uh, going move, moving forward, Kim Basinger as Lynn Bracken, previous episode Batman, nineteen eighty nine. Then we got James Cromwell as Dudley Smith. Uh, Babe, Babe Pickett in the City, and then a movie called Murder by Death from the 70s, I think. Matt, yeah. you've seen this recently um, as part of my recommendation, I think. I think I recommend... Oh, no, I thought you recommended Murder by Decree. What? Uh, Murder by Death? Yeah, 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 you yeah. did. Sorry, yeah. It oh, was, you're thinking uh, of Murder at 1600. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I meant to recommend the Wesley Snipes movie, but I instead uh, recommend the movie with uh, James Cromwell. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Uh, Dave yeah, DeVito. So, yeah, I did watch that recently. That was an excellent movie, by the <laughs> yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Murder, sorry, Murder by Decree is the Bob Clark movie. I was, it's yeah. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that it's sounds pretty great. cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, we got Dan DeVito as Sid Hudgens, uh, previous episode Batman Returns. David Straith- Hairn as Pierce, uh, Pierce Patchett, uh, collaborated again with uh, Curtis Hansen on The River Wild um yeah, yeah that's what yeah. It was he's also in uh the firm which is a uh a nice movie for fall time you have brought that movie up probably about 15 times in the past month have i really um, not in the past i month. feel like you've i feel like you've brought up the firm lately like we we're at the reds game and honka was like the firm and i, I wasn't was like, in I don't the know reds what game means. what reds game i didn't just go with the story dude oh okay. um what yeah you brought up, <laughs> <laughs> you brought up the firm a lot lately Chris so. is sweating, bro. Why are you sweating? Yeah, I don't know what you're um, talking about. Man, it's so hot in here. Uh, <laughs> and then we got some uh, some kind of like secondary tertiary characters. We got Pil- uh, Paul Guilfoyle as Mickey Cohen. Uh, I saw him last time in the, the the Negotiator. He's the one that sets off the the events of the Negotiator with Samuel Jackson. Never saw it. Really? Yeah, I never saw the Negotiator. Oh, pretty entertaining as a one time good a one time yeah. watch. It was on USA all the time. Yeah, it seems like a USA movie. Like, right, right, right after the jackal. I remember the jackal was always on USA. You got Jag, you got Bruce Jag Wills. for your Saturday, your your weeknight your, your weeknight uh, TV show, and then you go into to the jackal, and mm-hmm. then you go into the negotiator with Paul Gilfoyle. And then watch maybe a little mm-hmm. bit of Dead Zone. Yeah, dude, and some Psych, and, and some USA up all okay. night. Yeah, 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 up all night with uh with what's his face Gil- Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, I can't remember the girl's name though. I can't remember either. I wanted to uh, the, the catchphrase. Simon Baker is Matt Reynolds. Uh, we've all seen him in Land of the Dead. Uh, George A. Romero's Land of the Dead. Matt McCoy. God, I haven't seen that since theaters. I forgot he was in that. I saw him. I saw it on DVD like probably like eighteen years ago or something. I can't remember anything about that. Is that hold up? I saw it eighteen years ago. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, Land of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Land of the Dead is awesome. I watched is it, it recently. Is it it okay. holds up very well. Yeah. Uh, we got Matt McCoy, previous episode, Deep Star Six, and then a couple of Police Academy movies. And he collaborates with Curtis Hansen again, or I guess before this, before LA Confidential, uh, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. I think he is the star of The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Who is this? Matt McCoy. Which, who was that? Who was Matt McCoy? Uh, <laughs> In this movie, like, in LA Confidential, quiet. like we all got really. Quiet I thought listeners. everything froze. I'd <laughs> wait, wait. Who, which who, one was Matt McCoy? Who's Matt McCoy? 
Uh, he's the star of Badge of Badge of Honor, the show that Jack oh. Jack is like the uh, supervisor for. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and then we got uh, Gwenda Deacon as Mrs. Lefferts. She's the mom of the the murder victim in this movie. Uh, it took me like I kept thinking I was like I know that that name somewhere. Like who is this? Okay, and I looked her up. Terminator Two. She's the uh, she works in that like that uh, that prison that that uh, Sarah Connor's in. Okay, there's that part with the, the twin security guards. You remember the, yeah. the yeah. Guard. He's, he he asked the uh, the woman, "Do you want a coffee?" She's like, "I'd rather have a beer." And she's like, "In the uh, it's very very weird." I remember that line all the time because that scene is crazy. You're thinking of Billy Madison. <laughs> Oh, sideburns. It was her the entire time. She, yeah. <laughs> you want some of this milk? I'd rather have a beer. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and that's all I have for cast and crew. Okay. As we dive in this movie, I'm going to say it right off. This is one of the most confusing movies I've watched on this podcast. Really? Yes. Really? Next to Roadhouse? Um, <laughs> I didn't say baffling. I said confusing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you said... I'm pretty sure you said... Oh, no, you said it was the weirdest movie you've ever seen. Dude, this was... There are so many names thrown out, and I feel like you're supposed to be like, this person was here recently, and you're like, who is that? And it's, every now and then, they're cool about showing, like, a face, yeah, like, in this, like, little yeah. corner. A little vignette. But they need to do it all the time, because there's so many names in this movie. There are a lot I, of names, and then a lot of the references are to, like, Hollywood, or, like, referring to Hollywood icons or, like, ho- like mobsters around that time, basically. Yeah. Yes. A lot of, a lot of like, iconic names are, you know, names thrown around, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, agree. I, I, I would say noir is one of my favorite genres of all it's, time. It's a tough one for me, noir. But it, it's hard because a lot of times you really have to pay attention to the dialogue. And like for me, like I understood what was going on this movie the second time I was watching it yeah. because I knew it were, where it was going. Mm-hmm. But the first time, it's kind of as it's being unfolded, it's a lit. It is. I can imagine being a little hard to follow because it is. They're throwing yeah. names out. At one point, one of the detectives die in the uh, the shooting or the, the shooting, the and they show owl, just yeah the, the night, night owl, owl shooting, and they just show him briefly. Yeah. So I can imagine being um, a little confused, like who died. Yeah, like, and I guess that's it comes in it comes in the territory of a movie like this because it's basically a it's basically a murder mystery slash who done it type deal. Yeah. And you know, a little sprinkle of conspiracy as well. Uh so when you got that going on, there's a lot of names that are gonna be thrown around and you gotta keep keep on it to keep up with the mystery, basically. Yeah, and that's what I don't like about it is because when they have our relations, they're like, Where was blah blah blah? And you're like, he was supposed to be here that night or whatever. You're yeah. kind of like I don't know who that is. Which and is it's not yeah. Dick Stensland. Dick, Dick Stensland. Yeah, it's just too much. There's a lot of names in here, and it's very hard to follow. So when they have, like, I feel like I'm just repeating myself, but, like, when they have these revelations that are like, this is what happened, you're kind of like, wait, why are they excited? Like, mm-hmm. what's... So, well, that's, I mean, I feel gonna... like the movie's biggest downfall. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're going to, like... Yeah, obviously, it's spoilers about this movie we're gonna talk oh, about yeah. how the plot like, unravels I, I will say right off the bat like if you are listening to this episode or watching this episode on youtube do yourself a favor and watch this movie first it's on yeah. tubi it's on pluto tv or whatever i think yeah. it's on amazon prime yeah, 15 hours of free time just watch this movie uh because there's gonna be a lot of uh twists and turns that we that we unravel in this episode yeah well, because it is- okay so essentially what's going on in the movie, let's talk about like what the ending of this movie is. So like, that way we kind of talk about the plot more. So the whole point of this movie is that uh, Babe's dad uh, is... Yeah, say the, it like that because that makes yeah, more sense. Yeah. The actor from Babe, his, his, okay. his owner, Babe's owner. Yeah, James Cromwell, um, Dudley Smith. Yeah. So he is... One he the basically okay, so a big mob boss gets taken in for tax evasion, which is Mickey Cohen. He's like a big, big time mobster in the yeah. The in Hollywood fact, I think thing. I want to say Gangster Land. That's who yeah, Sean Penn plays. That's uh, Sean Penn's character. Yeah, he yeah. plays Mickey Cohen in, in that movie. So real life, real gangster. Um, he he's going to jail for tax evasion, and LA's basically opened up, and they're like, Who's gonna take over all the crime in LA? Yeah. And 
Babe's owner is like, okay, I'm gonna take over the crime in LA, the heroin, and, the heroin racket, the the dealings, yeah. and all that stuff. Like every time they're beating people, I didn't realize it until the second time I watched it. Yeah. Every time they're beating up gangsters at the hotel, they're beating gangsters that are out of town that are trying to come in and muscle their way in ah. to the 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 racket or scaring so the leftovers with, away, basically. Yes. So who? So basically, they're scaring these people out so that they can take over, mm-hmm. and that's the whole plot of the movie. It's like actually, like after you watch the movie, uh, it's actually very obvious yeah. that it's him the entire time. Like, yeah, they do, the, they do the big reveal spoiler when when Jack Vincennes kind of stops by Dudley Smith's the the police captain's house at night to kind of like here are some clues that me and Guy Pierce have found, you know. Uh, and then yeah. basically gets killed in the process. But it's like, ha- after having seen this movie a bunch of times, it's like, oh yeah, it's like so obvious that that Dudley is kind of the one that's like sweeping in on on everything. Yeah, because I, I, I think it's because you're just not looking for yeah. it. You know what I mean? When you're watching this, you're not looking yeah. to be like, who's who's the guy who's doing all this? Like, uh, it, I, I think like you're just not paying attention to it. So that's why it sneaks up on you. And it's mm-hmm. the reveal is when Kevin Spacey gets it yeah like that's the reveal mm-hmm. is that he's behind all the crime yeah um, all of it all of the, the only thing i don't understand about the story second time watching it is the heroin between buzz the bodyguard that got killed buzz and then the detect and then um Dick russell crowe's uh Dick russell crowe's partner who gets fired and killed yeah. in the night owl massacre what happened with those two because it's real weird <clears throat> I think like they were trying to rip uh, I think it turns out that they're trying to rip uh, the captain off with the heroin by stealing okay. all of it, and then retaliation, they get killed in, in the process, basically. Well, because what ends up happening, which is weird, is that Buzz, his body gets found in Underneath. the basement of the redheaded girl that looks like Rita Hayworth, <clears throat> her mom's house. Yeah. Because, th- because uh, Russell Crowe's partner and her snuck buzz's body into the basement and hid it there and that's why he's under the i think that's really confusing yeah they because weren't like, like they weren't a little more secretive about about yeah the, the body you know being hidden or maybe dumped in like a ravine or something like i think the mob even complains that there's like rats it smells like dead rats or something like underneath the house yeah it's like no there's a dead body down there yeah, I think that's the only part part of the movie where I was kind of confused on. I was like, why would they? Why is this body underneath her yeah. mom's house? Like, there's, there I understand how to moments, get rid of it, but why is that there? There are a couple moments, even for because I've seen this a bunch of times. There's still a couple moments that kind of like, like, why does that happen again? You know, kind of yeah. like, kind of a snatch situation where I've seen it so many times I still can't like quite figure it out. You know, which is odd though because I feel like snatch was more easy to comprehend than this. Like I thought. At least i mean snatch was confusing but at least like as it went along you're kind of like okay i get where this is going like it kind of fit itself together mm-hmm. like i still don't understand half the things that i actually saw all right um, yeah i mean yeah i think i think it would take another viewing if you watch it again it'll, mm-hmm. it'll come together a little bit better yeah yeah but then again I could when see we it. talk about stuff like that like i feel like with the movie you should get one chance to like um yeah, I feel you can't, like you, you can't, shouldn't that, have you to can't, ever we, review a movie unless it's really enticing and interesting. Yeah. That it's like, okay, I want to rewatch it. But if you walk out of a movie and you're just like, I'm beyond perplexed, uh, yeah. I think it's a bad sign. I, I'm not saying you should spoon feed everybody like everything. Yeah. I'm just saying if like... I think when you spoon uh, feed, it, it's terrible. I mean, that's just a yes. sign of terrible, terrible writing. Like, yeah. But you got I mean, a movie, I feel like we've talked about this before, but say a movie like Inception, yeah. which is so enjoyable on a first viewing. It's, but that, if you movie's, continue to, that movie is way more confusing than this, I feel like. Oh, I did. I feel like, yeah, yeah. by the time this ended, I was kind of frustrated. I'm not going to give my score yeah. yet, obviously. But I was frustrated because I was like, I don't get why this person did this. I don't know who that was. Like, I don't understand why Kim Basinger thought she was helping Guy Pierce out by, or, um, why Kim Basinger thought she was helping Russell Crowe out by sleeping with Guy Pierce? What, mm-hmm. what was the point of that? Wait, say that again. Kim Basinger slept with Guy Pierce. Yeah. And then she told Russell Crowe, I did that to help you. What does that mean? Oh, she it doesn't make it any... help you. Yeah, she did. She said, I did it for you. 
probably it's probably Dudley's uh, the the police captain probably uh, did it to photograph Exley so he would kill him probably right. Game Which was Exley, uh, Guy Pierce. Yeah, so well, she slept- She was told just to sleep with Guy Pierce, and Danny DeVito was going to get photos of it. Right? Yeah, she has no clue that it's like that it's it's in a, it's connected in any way to the night owl uh, the owners. captain yeah the, okay. uh, so why babe, she do it babe's then? owner why'd uh, she do it because she's a prostitute and that's just the the racket she's in and then like they just paid her to do it like she sleeps with all these guys but she yeah. said she did it to help russell crowe she said that yeah she said you i sure? did it let me you. call her. yes let me call her i want to hear her okay say this. <laughs> call, call lynn bracket up right now Ask i don't her. know i don't know i don't know why That's yeah, what I I mean. there's that so detail. many scenes in this movie that i'm just like i don't understand but then yeah. the movie keeps on going so you don't have time to like comprehend you're like yeah. you got more to go I would say the part where they're a... on the porch and he hits her yeah, yeah. she said i yeah. did it she said i did it to help you really yeah so uh, maybe the audio wasn't good on your end. Maybe it was just bad. <laughs> no, hey, sometimes phenomenal I like audio. What did you say? <laughs> no, I watch movies too, and then if I don't understand it, I just pretend like you didn't say it. So I okay. get what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, so if you like, you know, you turn a movie on and then you like go cook some dinner and then you come back, you're like, oh, I don't understand. I'll just keep watching. I guess you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Because I was in. The movie paused when I left the room. <laughs> um, so I don't want to get to this movie scene by scene because there's too much to talk about. But basically, you got your three like cop characters. You have your Guy Pierce, who's like goody good. Yeah. You have Russell Crowe, who you don't know if you he's trust. The, he's like the bruiser slash he'll do whatever it takes to, you know, yeah. put people yeah. in prison, basically. And then you got Kevin Spacey, who's shady. So you got like all three different sides of like it's this like police a, force. Yeah, it's like a three different. It's almost like you got your ultimate good, which is Guy Pierce. You got yeah. your ultimate bad, which is like uh, Russell Crowe in a way. See, I don't think he's bad. I feel like you just don't know. He's if you not trust bad, him but not. he's a, he's he's willing to be corrupt to do the to basically what what uh, the police captain tells Exley. He said, "Are you willing to shoot a uh, criminal in the back? Are you willing to plant evidence? Are you willing to interrogate them, beat them up?" Like that's Russell Crowe in a nutshell. Basically, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. yes, I would say like kind of ultimate bad in a way. And then Jack Vincent is kind of that neutral character. He'll do good or bad if it means you know rising up in uh you know becoming like a like a famous uh which we'll call it like a producer or whatever on the tv show like a he's kind of doing it for fame and fortune basically oh i totally yeah. disagree i but I, I would pick kevin oh, at the is. very bottom uh, and then nah. and then yeah i think he comes off as like the, like if you had to rank him as far as like good and bad you had guy pierce russell crowe and kevin spacey but then Kevin Spacey redeems himself by the end. Um, at least that's say, how I saw it. I feel like they're all assholes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah. feel like Guy Pierce, like one of the the uh, yeah, he's watching not, it this time. He's, he's extremely snitch. yeah, but he's extremely arrogant. Yeah, yeah. He's like absolutely. a lot of what he's doing. He's doing for his own pride. Yeah, and every like, literally everything he does is like ratting out on people. All right, what do you want in return? I just want to be promoted. You know. Yeah. He keeps rising the ranks because he keeps doing stuff that. Well, he acts like he's better than everybody throughout yeah. the entire movie. Like to well, the point where at the end, when he's looking in the reflection in the in the the one way mirror, and he's smiling, they're like, "What are you smiling at?" He's like a hero. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, and he's sitting there, and he's like this. He's like a hero. <laughs> <laughs> what? <a hero. laughs> <laughs> but he's just like um, he's an asshole. Like, yeah, yeah, he he does yeah. come off an asshole uh, for sure. So I did I did knock it a little bit, but to say a positive, I will say. Um, I know we brought it up earlier, but the soundscape is phenomenal. Those, oh, like, yeah. we I have love, like the like, subwoofer hooked up and the shotgun yeah. sound. I was gonna say, what are the shotguns sound like? Yeah, every Dude, time it the- was delightful. It sounded, <laughs> like, it was intense, it's like a, man. It's like that, that, it's like a thunk, like thunk, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. It's it crazy. It's very awesome. cool. What did it sound like when Kevin Spacey got shot? Did that scare you? No, because I kind of saw it coming. I assumed oh, really? that's what was about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It sa- actually sounded like it was like, Oh, okay. Oh, ah! Whoa! Wow. Whoa! Whoa and, when you, and when you brought Whoa. that flamethrower, <laughs> hey, can you can you uh, reenact the shootout at the end of this movie for us? Yeah. Um. Hey, kid. Welcome to L.A. Uh, you can't say that. That's confidential. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, everywhere. Like, it's like. 
that Ooh. sex commercial, dude. I'm just or that Dolby commercial. I'm just being oh. blown away. Yeah, I know. So for the <laughs> listeners, turn up that volume on that last scene and rewind it. It's a uh, it's a doozy. Sorry so, to scare okay. you on your way to work. <laughs> so the soundscape was solid. Um, if we have to go another negative, I say I don't think there's too many negatives. Okay, actually I will say negative. And okay, so I know we've made the joke back in the day that the Russell Crowe chair scene. Oh, I, th- that is hilarious. I didn't, I didn't find it funny in context. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Out of really, context, it's hysterical. It's just in the, the fact movie, that, it was fine. It's just the fact that I tried to do that where I try to like grip a chair and it's like really difficult, but he does it because he's super <laughs> strong. He's Russell Crowe and he's so angry. Yeah. I didn't find it goofy. I watched it with my girlfriend. And I was like, all right, there's a goofy scene. See if you can point it out. Yes. All right. The scene and is so intense. Happened, as soon as it happened, neither one of us laughed. And I was like, actually, I was like, that was it. But within the movie, it's not that goofy. So yeah, I was so okay quick. With it's the so scene quick. Is so intense. Yeah. He, yeah. He like basically puts the uh, like, I think a, a bullet into the, the chamber. He's putting in the guy's mouth and like pulling the trigger. And you're like, oh my God, is it gonna, is he gonna kill this dude? Right. Um, hey, you know what? I'll say this, this about ca- the movie. Well, I was going to say, gonna, to continue I'm, on I'm this gonna... real quick. Okay. Well, to All continue right. on that same thing. With his chair stuff, Russell Crowe is a superhero in this movie. Everything he does, he's like power, like kicking and like everything is so <laughs> intense. Kicking. Whatever. He is a, it, it's, everything is so exaggerated with what he does in this movie. Um, to the point that when he throws the DA out the window. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you guys catch the wires holding the DA in? No. It was, I mean, I don't like to point out bloopers. People are going to mess up. I get it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. But when he throws them out the window, it's very clear there's wires hanging from really? his feet. Yeah, I was oh, amazed right. by it. That's yeah, awesome. that 4K TV, dude. Right? What were we going to say yeah. about that? Uh, I would say the only thing I would knock for this movie is like a story element. Yeah. Is the literal story element that holds the whole movie together is the massacre at the night owl. The night owl, yeah. The whole point of that massacre was to get rid of uh, Russell Crowe's partner and the redhead, uh, Rita Hayworth, look look alike, right? They couldn't get rid of them in any other way that would cause like less of attention. Like instead of massacring an entire like I feel like what happened restaurant full of people instead of just right. being like, hey, let's just go yeah. ask him to meet you out in this 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 dark lot or the yeah. hotel, and we'll kill him there. Like do. Like, it's, do what they did to Mickey Cohen's mobsters earlier, where they're like in the middle yeah. of a dark alleyway or whatever, and they light them up with a Tommy gun, or I don't know, machine gun or whatever. But yeah, they go into a public public restaurant and then kill like literally everybody. Just that to draws, knock draws, these two off. Draws a lot of attention. It's kind of yeah, uh, and I understand that like you couldn't just shoot them up in a car like that because then it would be like, okay, why did these people get shot up? Like, oh, yeah. this is her, she's connected to, here, and I this think, is him, he's next. I cop. think the the, the premise of that is that they're trying to pin it on the three black characters that they uh, were, you know, basically they, they're driving the same car. They had been seen previous uh, to the night owl shooting, uh, shooting off the shotguns in the middle of the night. So they're trying to literally pin it on these people. And then. Yeah, that's no, they, they use those people to cover it. Yeah. 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 No, they use the three, uh, the three, what was the car? that they drove the, 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 the whatever car it was yeah but they use those three the suspects to, to pin it on them yeah to cover up the night owl shooting yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. so yeah. it what i'm saying is just like you could have just like you could have shot these two like on a mugging like it was like oh, oh yeah they, got, they, yeah, they could have they could have done something a little bit simpler you know like, yeah it just feels like a robbery or something to, to massacre like seven people or six or seven people in a diner yeah just to bump these two off yeah, you know that's my only knock on the movie. Other than that, I like okay. this movie a lot. Um, if we have to do another positive, not to jump to the end, but I feel we're kind of jumping around any anyway. No, uh, yeah, we're jumping around. Very solid ending as far as the shootout in the house. Oh yeah, yeah. And then finding out Russell Crowe survived, and, and he's got this random, uh, random ivy tube going on his cheek that makes no sense whatsoever yeah not really it's just yeah. for for show i guess it's like not going when, he that, when he's got that robot arm and he like <laughs> he grabs like guy fist he's like good job man. Like, zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you got promoted 
<laughs> you protect the law now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, very solid ending. Um, even though, like I said, it gets a little confusing towards the end. This last like 15 minutes is like very cool. Yeah, the, the basically like the team up because uh, Russell Crowe hates Guy Pierce like almost this entire yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah. And man, it's like always awesome because it's saying you know you see him basically kind of being the bruiser you know beating up the people that are being interrogated you got the interrogation of the the three black guys where he like breaks the chair you know yeah and then uh basically dudley the police captain babe babe's dad his last ditch effort to get rid of <laughs> actually is this sick uh 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 russell crowe on him and so it's just yeah. like that scene is crazy because he comes I in and he's like throwing him around, like flying across the room and everything. He's like throwing him across the room, and throwing power him. kick in and stuff yeah, like power that. Kicking. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I so really insane. like that setup for that, that oh, part yeah. of the story. And then yeah. I really, really like the setup for like these like the little story elements in here. Uh, but I like the the story element that um, uh, he comes up with a fake name for the guy that killed his dad. That's pretty says good. Says it to Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey says it as he's dying to uh babe's owner yeah. and then he says it back to guy pierce and it's like that's how guy pierce Rolo, finds out that Rolo it Tomasi. Like, yeah, yeah yeah he found out that he killed him chris you look like you're getting in the dark there buddy oh i, I was in the <laughs> film in the shadows i feel like <laughs> it, i feel like you're like, you look like in a, you look like you're about to reenact the baba duke or something <laughs> oh, very cool <laughs> Oh, uh, bye, Chris. <laughs> See you, Chris. You know, shine a flashlight sure on you, or there we go. That's <laughs> oh yeah, that was <laughs> that fixed it. The yeah. candle, light a candle. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I feel like, as far as movies concerned, not to cut it short, that's all I really have to say as far as movie. Matt, do you have any anything else you want to talk about? Hanto, anything? Um, it's a pretty other than like the confusingness. It's a pretty straightforward noir film. It's not trying to break any grounds or anything like that it's like more of a tribute to these older noir films. i'd be curious about because i think this is based off a book right yeah uh, i'd be curious James to see like how yeah i'd be curious to see how how different the book is to um the, uh movie adaptation the book what i was reading was that the book's 500 pages long okay and it's got cool. eight diff- it's got eight different storylines in the book oh my and then what they did that what the screenwriters did um like condensed when they went it. to adapt it was they condensed they they just took the three cop stories like the okay. three main cop stories and put them into the movie but there's like five other stories going on is it like the criminals book. or are they like just random pedestrians or i don't know i don't okay. know i know okay. though too that like the girl that um uh the girl that was tied up inside the guy's home the, the, yeah. rape, the she was like yeah. the rape victim uh, she has a love affair with Russell Crowe and um, uh, Guy Pierce's characters. So she's like, and a, that's where the the fight comes in between those two. So she's kind and I don't of think like it's, they they basically transfer her or transform her into like the Lynn Bracken character. Yes, basically. that's what I'm thinking. I don't know, but I'm also okay. like kind of paraphrasing what I read. Um, okay, I do want to talk though. Uh, how do you feel about Guy Pierce? being attracted to Kim Basinger so quick. This is the only like this is another element yeah. of the story I wasn't really feeling. Yeah. I feel like he like nowhere. He jumps are really fast for a guy who's like all about like his like morals and his like the obligations. Law, protect the yeah. you know protect the public. Yeah, he practically walked into that house with his pants off already. I think it's like, him hey, I think it's him re- kind of like I'm ready. <laughs> I think it's him kind of strutting his stuff because he's like been you know Oh he, he strutted his stuff. He like starts like lower, you know, lower tier rookie cop, you know, and then gets promoted yeah. and he's like already rising the ranks. I think it's him just kind of like strutting, strutting around like I, I got the power. I kind of wish. The power. Yeah, that's why he kicks the door in. He gets Russell <laughs> Crowe to kick the door in for him and then power kick. Uh, yeah, there you go. A, this door is unhinged. Oh, <laughs> hmm. that's uh, interesting. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I have a beautiful mind. Look out, it's a couple of nice guys. Oh, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's okay. A, I, it's I'm following. Thinker. I'm following. Yeah, it. it's a. Um, yeah. You got master I wish and commander. Guy Pierce is... <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I wish Guy Pierce would have had like 
some of some attraction to Veronica Lake. Yeah, to like, because that's the girl she that Kim Basinger is like basing her like, look off to, so look like Veronica Lake. So I that feel like it made if, sense. Yeah, Guy Pierce had like a picture of Veronica Lake on his desk or something like that, and then when he walked into the room, I can totally see it. One hundred percent why he would jump. Her that's cool. Right I think that's yeah. coming true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it it's like, oh shit! Like it's the girl that I like lust after. She looks just like exactly. her. Exactly. He's in that house for like yeah, two I just minutes, feel like- and then he like forces himself on her and you're it's very kind of like eh, yeah i think it's supposed to be from? i think it's supposed to be like the you know the ultimate good being corrupted by the power that he has and then it's kind of just redeems himself at the end by doing the right thing and kind of saying what happened or and the, the plot of the yeah. whole play but it's I'm not, just, a good, I'm just not gonna because it's, it's, it's such not a good a, moment, it's such a quick motivation, yeah, yeah, it's not a good moment, <laughs> it's not a the good way, moment, like. In his, <laughs> in his career, not a good moment in his career. It's a stain. You know? It's not good. Next not time good. something bad happens in, our co- in the company of you two, I'm going to say that, like, this is not a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not a good moment. So uh, here's a little bit of trivia. I don't know if you saw this, Matt. Um, the, okay. the Johnny Stompanato, he's like the, the I think he was like a, Damn yeah, it. go for it, man. Yes. Go for it. Go no, for no, it. No, no, no. You, you're already on it. Go for it. I forgot to say it, but this is actually the only good trivia that I read. Like the so, really good, like, I guess, piece. and and please jump in if I if I try if I like butcher this at all. John, Johnny Stampanati, who was like a was he like a mafia? He was a Mickey Cohen. Uh, uh, like I think he's just like he's just a muscle, and he plays that in this movie. He's yeah. just a muscle guy. Yeah, and he was a and, former, I think, like a former U.S. soldier comes home and then becomes basically a mob mob enforcer type type guy. And this but, is uh, the guy that Russell Crowe visits gets, in the bar and balls. grabs his his balls. Is ding he's squeezing his balls. Okay. Okay. So in real life, he did have a relationship with Lana Turner, who is an actress. Um, and spoiler, I mean, he ended up dying in real life. Like Lana Turner's daughter, teenage daughter, like ended up stabbing this guy to death, basically. But at one point, Lana Turner had a relationship with Sean Connery. <laughs> and on the set of oh. one of his yeah, is, is this what you're talking? About? What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say like that. Whatever you like, that whole trivia right there that uh, he used to beat her. Yeah, there's a scene where Lana Turner's in there. Remember, guy Pierce walks in. He's like a whore that looks like Lana Turner, is still yeah. a whore. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, "I am Lana Turner," and throws yeah. a glass of water in his face. Yeah. So he did have a relationship with Lana Turner, and I guess he used to beat Lana Turner. And one at one point, her Lana Turner's daughter just like had enough and stabbed him to death and went to court and it was considered like um uh like um i can't like justifiable like homicide yeah, justifiable yeah justifiable homicide so like they actually like her daughter like was it, she got away like she got away that sounds yeah. weird well no but, she like, was justified in killing this guy basically yeah she's justified in getting yeah i know me saying getting away is not like oh they didn't get the riddler yeah but, oh they didn't uh, get oj simpson <laughs> But like, so it was just file homicide. So she like, uh, she didn't go to prison for it, but which is kind of interesting because Russell Crowe's character has that thing against uh, wife beaters in this yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, but go ahead, Sean so, Connery and Lana right. Turner. I so didn't I'm gonna this. like just read what I have written down here, or like I basically just did a copy and paste situation. So. But in 1957, Stampanato became so jealous about Turner's relationship with future James Bond actor Sean Connery, he flew to the United Kingdom. He stormed onto the set of Another Time, Another Place, threatening Connery with a gun. Unperturbed, the six-foot-two-inch Scotsman, who was a former bodybuilder in karate belt, uh, black belt, bent Stampanato's hand back, forcing him to drop the weapon. Connery subsequently knocked Stampanato out with one punch. Uh, and then Stampanato is reported to the police and quietly deported from the United Kingdom. Wow, hmm. what a badass story! Yeah. Hiya, James the giant, the James Bond. Hiya, you know, like the little James the giant peach. Was that what you were gonna say? What? No, yeah. <laughs> James, James Bond, the I giant to... peach. James Bond, the giant peach. <laughs> maybe you heard of what? Oh, what maybe, <laughs> and don't you forget that. <laughs> I guess you could say that um, that's awesome, dude. That yeah. Sean Connery was what a cool story. Unhinged. No, because he, he's not Russell Crowe. He wasn't in the movie. It looks like movie. he was the master and commander. No, no dude, it's not working. Chris, your screen is so dark right now. Like, oh, you I look know. Like a free floating head. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a pair of eyes that like 
that pop up in the corner and like it's like in the, the background darkness. it's to be the ending of re- the the record record or wreck you know you're oh yeah yeah. Drag- yeah you're dragged into the darkness if i get closer yeah it's oh, brighter. i got what you're going with <laughs> i got what yeah that looks better dude if i get closer yeah okay i feel like you're like you're like lighting your your stage with like a big lighter that has no uh uh oil in it so it's just like <laughs> It just sparks and you're like that's how you're lighting yourself I have a right flint. now i'm rapidly scrapping yeah the, i'm scraping a flint. the lantern is slowly losing its oil it's like slowly going out <laughs> it is it is so like, welcome to the midnight society <laughs> just this one the dark episode called know. no lights yeah i got nothing either. yeah i got nothing you're right, literally so... in the dark right now there is no <laughs> it's so dark right now <laughs> Like your hair is like blending into the shadows. It's like that it's, dark. It's consuming me. <laughs> um, so let's wrap this up then. So LA Confidential, 1997, has a 99% Rotten Tomatoes. Honto, what would you give it? Yeah, I'd say like 95%. Okay. Like, yeah, this is top tier uh, filmmaking right here for me. Okay. Matthew? What would you give like um, originally when I first saw this movie? Originally when I first saw this movie, I did not like the shootout at the end. I thought it didn't yeah. fit. But I feel like watching it this time, knowing it was coming, I ended up enjoying it a lot more. So I'd give it about like a 92. Okay. Is where I'm standing. Um, I think this movie is insanely well made. Everything looks great. The music's awesome. Everything is just very solid. <laughs> um but overall i would <laughs> dude you gotta get closer it's the dark it's getting darker i would what's i think if i had to pick for rotten tomatoes <laughs> what i would give <laughs> what if I you did do a whole every episode like that, and it was called, it was called on. like <laughs> hey um we watched Jelly confidential from 1997 <laughs> It was good. <laughs> um, so no, if what's I had the, to pick, what's the, uh, Zordon? You look like Zordon from, from oh, Power Rangers. Ra- Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Cinema Cult Podcast. Um, <laughs> if I had to give this a Rotten Tomatoes score, I would give this. I'll say an eighty-two. Um, it's insanely well made. It's got so many good things going for it. I just think the confusing yeah. mentality makes it a little more harder and enjoy i think that's um, you know i think that's typical of like the genre or like the style it's just like it's a murder mystery slash conspiracy where there's a lot of things coming together at yeah. once and you have to like really pay attention i think if you watch this again somewhere in the future like in the next year or something i think uh your grade will go higher yeah but yeah i, I, don't, so I don't know if i have like the the desire to want to return to it that's the only thing was so, it uh, whatever you desire? The floor. Uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's that the, a joke from this movie. I don't get. Well, yeah, because you, you were in the fucking kitchen cooking or something during the during that scene. So that's LA County yeah. from 1997. <laughs> um, Nate, thank you for the request. We really enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad I watched it in general. Um, <laughs> no, I think it was, was. I think it was good. I'm glad I watched it. This movie's been talked about a lot, so I'm glad we finally got that going. Yeah. Um, we have another request next week. Um, this is actually from multiple uh, requests, and it's something we've been talking about doing for months now, but the movie is Summer School, starring uh, Mark Harmon um, from 1980, I want to say 1985, I think is, um, judging by the worn-out VHS cover that I used to have of this. I'm going to say 19... 1980. Yeah. So uh, we have all seen this. I have a lot to say about this movie. Man, it is getting so dark this, in here. This will be like, um, <laughs> it's getting brighter. It's, I feel like it's getting brighter in my room. But yeah. If I just stand back here. <laughs> so we're doing 1987 summer school. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> I, have so, <laughs> I have so much to say about summer school. Um, lots this, of trivia, lots of personal this, stories. The second time I've watched it this year. Really? I, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, um, me so and Chris just watched it about yeah. a year ago. Actually, it's probably a couple of years ago. Um, was, so I'm definitely due for a viewing. Um, so yeah, so that'd be another listener request. And then September is all back to school months. So we have a few other listener requests and back to school picks. Yep. And then October will be October Scarefest with Stephen King movies. Uh, we'll do Halloween Kills. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife will be there. We have James Bond month in November. 
new James Bond movie to talk about as well. And December mm-hmm. will be a few Christmas picks, probably a horror fi- flick, and then something like the Santa Claus or something that's more of a traditional type. I think you want uh, to cover the Santa Claus. Santa Claus is bomb, man. I love Santa Claus. I don't think Claus. I've ever that seen movie... it before. Oh, that's could be an interesting one. Really? To watch. You haven't, you haven't seen it, Hanto? I'm too busy oh, yeah, watching actually... LA Confidential, enjoying good movies. Actually, it's let's legit. watch Santa Claus together. Santa Claus, Matt, Santa Claus is legit, right? Yeah, Santa Claus is legit. Yeah. What about so the, sequels? We'll watch the sequels? Good? I, I don't mind remember. them. They're fine. They're okay. Yeah. Martin we, we can do Batman one. Returns. We can watch Batman Returns. We, we already done we, that. Previous episode, my dude. Five Again. years ago. Again. Actually, Again. It was like, I think Again. it was like the first year, like six <laughs> or seven years ago. LA They've Confidential been doing us a long time. Again. <laughs> a good christmas one <laughs> summer school again <laughs> again um uh, so yeah that'll round out the year and then we got a few things planned for the beginning of january um but thank you Let's so see. much for listening oh good what you got oh i would say are we gonna try and i don't are we gonna try and do like a top top episodes of the year or anything like that top Let's, episodes we, women oh i'm sorry top movies of the year have we seen any top. new movies this year Gosh, yeah i mean i've seen I a few I, we still got honestly, a few left it depends if we it, we'll, if end up, we'll end up doing it in February like we always do. Yeah. Uh, but what about, it what might about be a, another situation where we like none of us have really seen anything nothing. this year, and it's like only I think I've seen like I think I've only seen like three movies so far this year, like new movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we have a lot to see. A lot's going to come out. By the what end about of the another year. Uh, Christmas video episode? Are we going to try and do that this year? I like to. I would like to do a Halloween video episode. Well, uh, all right, Chris is already set up for Chris is already set up for the Halloween episode right now. Yeah, there we go. Let's let's go over there and we'll is, go ahead and film it right now. That is now. horrifying. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, we gotta get you a lamp, bro. <laughs> hey, we gotta do you earlier gotta times, man. Your electricity bills. Literally, by any light. <laughs> I literally sat by the yeah. window so I could use the sunlight to record this episode. But um, if you have any more requests, please send us this way. We've actually, all the requests we've been getting has been amazing. And it's been very exciting. Um, yeah, just yeah. To hear people been, reach it's out been exciting to, to get all these requests. Yeah. So we'll do some more uh, episodes. And then we wanted to start doing some more video episodes as well. Uh, not just Zoom, but just like um, actual like theatrical videos or whatever you want to call theatrical. it. Ooh. Theatrical. The television mm-hmm. show. Get the television show. We're going to go to the yeah. tray. Yes. So uh, thank you so much for listening. We love doing this. We hope you love listening to it. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. I'm Honto. And we'll see you next time.